Hi, in this Golf Smart Insight, I'm gonna help you understand the forces as they apply in the golf swing. I know that there's a lot of confusion out there about um, what the forces are, how you can see them, or if you can see them, and the general patterns. So in this video, I'm gonna hopefully clarify some of those forces, especially as they relate to the in-plane movement, sometimes referred to as alpha. All right, before we look at how it relates to the golf swing, I've got this simple little drawing to help you understand the net force because I think it's um, often confused for what a golfer is trying to do versus what is actually happening. So, okay, so in this scenario, I've got a cliff, right? And then there's a weight hanging around a pulley being held by this uh, gentleman here. Now that pulley is not a string, it's a cable, and that's gonna be important for this third situation. Okay, now, I've got the weight on a cable attached to the guy. There's a couple different things that could happen. Scenario one, he's kind of lowering it down slowly. Scenario two, he's backing up and he's actually pulling it upward. And then scenario three, because it's a cable, he's actually pushing it down. So he's having it fall faster than gravity. Okay, in the first scenario, actually the second scenario is probably the easiest. So let's start with that. So in the second scenario, Right here, he's got the cable moving up this way. He is clearly pulling on the cable back towards him like this. That's where the net force would be going um, and it would be greater than whatever the weight is uh, with gravity. On this second example, we've got the weight going down. So he's slowly letting it down. So his hands and everything would be moving this way, but because the weight is going down slower than gravity, the net force is back towards him. It's gonna be in the same direction as him pulling up, just to a lesser degree or a lesser uh, magnitude. It's only in example three, where if he was to accelerate this down greater than just what gravity would be doing, that he would actually have the force and his hand direction going out towards the pulley like so. Now we'll talk about where this uh, relates to the golf swing, um, but the the common thing I hear is, okay, if we want the forces coming back in towards you, that you need to be really pulling up on the handle. Well, understand that if you, if you create a ton of club head speed and this weight is pulling away from you or the golf club is swinging away from you, you're gonna have a really high force pulling in towards you even though your arms are extending and kind of letting that weight uh, kind of pull your arms out. So that's an important thing to understand that the net force is is a relationship of the physics happening to you or by you, not necessarily what you're trying to do and what you're feeling. Now let's take that rope on a string analogy and apply it to the golf swing. And let's specifically look at uh, going normal down to the bottom. So pulling up on the handle and having the force going more um, up towards you. The orange dots that I have drawn represent roughly where the center of mass would be. So just behind the shaft in the direction of the club head, kind of like this. Again, this is incredibly rough, but we don't have to get too specific to be able to see this general pattern. If we, if we take a look at these dots and if we imagine just the vertical change or just the, the change towards the ground, kind of like this, you can see as you get down here towards the bottom, the vertical change between the dots gets smaller and smaller. That means that the center of mass is not accelerating down towards the ground because the if it was, then the space between these dots would get bigger and bigger. So since the distance between the dots is getting slightly smaller, that means that the force would be working up away from the ground. So when we get down here where the swing, where the club has a flattish path, it was moving very vertically through here, and then it has a flattish path. That means somewhere around here, which ends up being roughly when those hands are in front of the thigh, it starts to flatten out, and therefore the force would be working away from the ground from, let's say, the frame just before this, all the way down through and past the impact. So you can see that Unless you had a, an angle of attack somewhere around 90 degrees, you're probably going to have the net force working away from the, the ground or towards you 
What really matters is how you apply that force away from the ground, whether you do it more from your body, whether you do it more by pulling and bending your arms. Um, but as you've seen, you don't necessarily have to feel like you pull your hands in closer to your body in order to get the proper net force pattern. The other instruction that I commonly hear is down at the bottom you want to be pulling not only up, but you want to be pulling in. So this is a little bit trickier to see. The easiest way to see this is actually from an overhead cam, um, but think of it in the same light as what we did from the face on. We can see that at this phase in the downswing, the center of mass is having some clear movement out towards the golf ball. Now remember, if it slows down its movement out towards the golf ball or it changes direction and the center of mass starts moving away from the golf ball, that means that there was a net force away from the golf ball. So down here at the bottom where you can see that the, the path of the club starts working back up and in, that means that well before then there was a net force that is working away from the golf ball. So you can see that in order to make a swing where you didn't have the net forces working back up and in, um, or away from the ground and away from the golf ball, it would be very challenging. In fact, it would not look very much like a golf swing at all. The most important part is how you create these forces, not necessarily what the forces actually are. There's still a lot of stuff that we can learn from investigating the, these net forces, but the overall patterns kind of make sense with the general movement patterns. If you're not sure what the general movement patterns are, or therefore what the arms should be doing in the backswing or transition or the release, uh, either subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, that way you can get updates as soon as we post them online, or if you wanna get into the real nitty gritty, uh, head over to golfsmartacademy.com sign up for a free membership, and then you can take a look at the uh, concept videos and the drill videos to help you understand all the details as far as what the body should be doing during the different phases of the swing and how to recognize the feedback as to if you're actually doing it or not.